Good day, folks. Look what the courier dropped off. This box from Siglent. Let's, uh, let's have a look and see what's inside it. I know what's inside it. There we go. All right, what do we have in here? Okay, we have a, an IEC power cable. Very nice. We have a USB cable, your standard USB A to USB B. We have a piece of documentation here. Ah, the SCS 800X HD series digital oscilloscope. Quick start guide. And inside, it's got a, a box contents list. That's good to have. So we got one oscilloscope, one quick start guide, one calibration certificate. Where's that? Oh, there it is. Certificate of calibration. Very nice. Uh, one USB cable, which you've already seen, one power cord, and two or four passive probes. We should have four for this one because this is an 804 and uh, we do indeed have four probes. Hmm. These are the PB470 70 megahertz probes. Now these ones, uh, looking through the package here, I don't see the, the this little spring clips. No, they don't bother with the little spring clips. All right, here's the uh, baby herself. Let's uh, pull this out into the box. And a uh, nice foam padding. And there's the scope itself. So here we go, let's take this off. Ooh, the peel. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty good. I I, I thought this uh, screen would be a lot uh, a lot shinier than it is, and that's nice to see that it's not all that shiny. That's good. The layout of this scope is very 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 similar to the layout of the SDS 1104 XE that I have. The back end of it is the same color as the uh, 1104 XE. Um, but the front plate has got this uh, charcoal gray, which uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, but it, from my perspective, the way it looks is far less important than the way it works. So we're going to find out how it works over time. But I just wanted to have a quick look at it here and unbox it. Let's, let's get the uh, other scope down here. All the buttons are actually given the same names. Same symbols around them. So it's going to be no problem at all finding the, uh, where to push the buttons on this. Because I already know from this one. Now it seems to me that the screen, if I look at the bezel here and I look at this here, it's a little different. This is a touch screen, but it seems to be a tiny little bit smaller on this one than on this one. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference. It's only a tiny little bit. This one has, says just save on it. And this one says save and recall. But other than that, they have exactly the same labels on them. Same channel colors. All right then. So this is in my lab. This is going. This is going to be replacing this. Uh, it's exactly the same form factor, so it's going to be able to go back into the same position up here on the bench. It will should fit in there absolutely no problem at all. On the back here, anything different? No, exactly the same layout on the back as well. Ethernet port, USB type B, USB type A, pass, fail, trigger out, and the very same functions on this. And turn it on for the first time. See how long it takes to boot up. It wasn't that long. A little bit longer than the 1104 but not incredibly longer. 
So that's a very nice fine line there. Let's see if I turn off the sensitivity here. A little bit of a DC offset there. Do a self calibration on it. I'll speed through this on the video. Okay, that seems to have worked very well. It's taken out all the offset, even at this uh, range of uh, 500 microvolts per division. So it, it's so sensitive. Look, just bringing my finger near, that is incredible. That took 20 minutes. So if you're going to do a, a calibration, and I would suggest you do it once in a while, especially if you, if you upgrade the firmware, and uh, you know if the machine has been off for a long period of time, it's been sitting there for, you know, you went on vacation, came back, I would run the calibration. Yeah, it, it does a great job. Now, I'm going to try a couple of things here. First, I'm going to try the auto setup. Okay, it didn't take that long. Now, we're going to plug in, I have this uh, fast rise time oscillator here. Uh, this is the Bodnar. It's better than 40 picoseconds. So, we'll plug that into it. And we'll do um, we'll do the auto setup again. Okay. Well, let's have a look at that. So we'll put a measurement here on it. Measure. We we'll click it into advanced mode, and we're we'll going to type rise time. And turn statistics on. Yeah. So our mean is a uh, 3.71 nanoseconds rise time. That's pretty good for 70 megahertz scope. So what are the features on this uh, scope that I'm going to enjoy over and above what I had on the 1104XE? Well, first of all, uh, for single channel, we get two giga samples per second and 12 bits of resolution. Now it does drop down as we enable channels. So the number of giga samples per second uh, for two channels on is, is one giga sample per second and four channels on is 500 mega samples per second. With the 1104, uh, the best we can get is with one giga samples per second. And that's with up to two channels, one or two channels. If you enable three or four channels, it drops down to 500 mega samples per second. So at least with the one channel here, we get up to two giga samples per second. That's a real improvement. And the 12 bit resolution, vertical resolution is, is pretty phenomenal too, for looking at very fine detail. All right, folks, uh, thanks for coming out for this uh, quick unboxing here and very quick and dirty look at it but uh, from what I've seen so far I'm, I'm quite pleased. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.